everybody, Rose Matter here. Welcome to part 13 of my Fate Stay Night Unlimited Play to Works Let's Play. Uh, last episode is the aftermath of the showdown between Berserker and Gilgamesh. Unfortunately, Gil uh, Berserker just got like absolutely murked. Um, and him and Ilya are, are killed, so our potential partner is gone. Shinji offered to team up with us, but of course we shot him down because we don't like Shinji. And even though we had no other options at the time, it was still better than teaming up with Shinji, because I think like Tosaka and, and Shiro both know that that would be a bad idea. Thankfully, Lancer ended up showing up out of nowhere, offering to, uh, to team up with us to take down uh, Archer and Caster. So that's nice. Whether there is like a um, ulterior motive, I'm assuming there is, because there always seems to be in, you know, something like this. Uh, you know, knowing that Lancer is Kyrie's servant, I'm guessing that Kyrie has some plans for keeping an eye on them and wanting to make sure that Tosaka and Shiro stick around. We'll find out if that's the case, but for now, um, I'm assuming this is going to be, like, the big battle episode where we're gonna go and try and take out Caster and Archer, so I'm really excited to see how that is going to go. So let's jump into it, let's see what happens next. Before that, there's just one more conversation. Just as they exit the forest and when the sky is beginning to lighten up, before they go to the church, she informs him of the fact she's kept hidden. She does not tell him what that means, and he doesn't inquire about it. It's because such matters are unnecessary when they're about to face their greatest enemy, Aster. The one and only pendant. The one he found in her room and returned to her. The one he found on that night and put into his desk. Now is not the time to ask about the contradiction. Okay. Sure, there's some important information there. Uh, but we will we'll reach that bridge when we get to it. I'm more hyped about the fight. The decisive battle is near. The tall church can be seen in the horizon. Tosaka says she wants to confirm one last time. Our roles are already set. Lancer will draw Archer and Saber away from Castor. We'll use that opening to attack Castor. Lancer asks, ironically, if we would be able to beat her by ourselves. To that... <laughs> Tosaka answers with confidence. I don't know what she means by outwitting her. She didn't tell us even when we asked, so it must be a plan that will have a lower success rate if we know about it. Then what I need to do is fulfill Tosaka's demand. With all my might, I will keep Kuzuki from protecting Castor. If I need them, I'll project his swords as many times as necessary. I close my eyes and dive inside of myself. The magic circuit inside of me is stable. Magic beyond one's ability will destroy the Castor. Half of my body became numb the first time. It was easy and nothing happened to me the second time. There's no guarantee the third time will be the same, but I don't think it's a problem to project his swords. My body is stable. The magic circuit that was hard even to construct is easily activated now. It's like there's a fake nerve behind my real nerves, and they're reversible with the push of a button. I'm trying to convince myself it's because I've gotten used to it. I can easily prepare the swords. Projection has become my primary weapon. It's a big improvement over ten days ago. It's not only my magic. My sword technique has improved as well. The reason behind it... No, I try not to think about the reason more important to beat Castor and take back Saber. Is it because, like, he is encountering, like, he's uh, Archer, like, he's in uh, range of Archer, like, they're in the same timeline and therefore, like, he's unlocking these powers that he has, or he will have? 
asking myself stupid questions can come after the battle. Headache gets stronger as I near the church. It's just like when I was looking for Tosaka, but I avoid thinking about that. And maybe he gets the headache from like being near Archer. It's like a it's like a paradox, sort of. The fact that the future him is here with the present him, or a version of him. The morning light is grey. The sun is blocked off by clouds, obscuring the dawn's brightness. The sky above is gloomy. The sky is more grey than black and reminds me of that time ten years ago. It should rain soon. An impure grey sky. Beneath it stands that man. Kimi no koto da. Okay, so this is pretty much what he said in the bad end we got, except we got a Lancer on our side. He stares at her with cool eyes. Tosaka doesn't say anything and stares back at him. It was like last time where she's like, now nah, we just came here to die with dignity. We don't have a plan, but now we do. Ah, とりあえず、てめえの相手はこの俺だ。驚いたな。私を失い、数日と経たずに新しいサーバントと契約したか。やれやれ。私もそうだが、君の移り気もなかなかのものだ。これは、たもと分かった世界だったかな。構わないわし
ランサーがアーチャーと決着をつける前にキャスターを倒すわよ分かってるここから無駄口はなしだそれと本当にキャスターを任せていいんだな父さかええとことんまで追い詰められるだろうけどそれでも手は出さないでシロは久月先生をできるだけ引き離してくれればいい We go past the main area and head to the door leading to the courtyard. I won't hesitate if Tosaka says so, but I don't know if it's possible for me to back Tosaka up, even if she's cornered. My opponent is Kuzuki. I won't be able to dodge his attacks if I'm paying attention to Tosaka. Caster's presence is getting closer. The church is filled with her magical energy, as she must not be hiding her powers anymore. I bet she already knows about our raid. Torres. Om. Carefully knit together the illusion using eight steps. I'm getting the hang of it. His swords are in my hands within a minute. I feel a light headache. Even though I'm getting used to it, it takes a toll on my body. Projection is damaging my body deeper than I realize. Was it my imagination? I think Tosaka hung her head for a second. We go down through the darkness. We run down the stairs and come out into an open area. And after that, we jump into the temple like I did before. We had to make a good entrance. We land in the temple. This was supposed to be a surprise attack, but Castor greets us with composure. Kuzuki Suichiro is standing next to Castor. I don't feel any enmity or bloodlust from him. That's his battle posture. His clear murderous intent is hiding the scariness of that man. In that regard, he is more like an assassin than servant assassin. <laughs> Saber is on top of the altar. She's just like she was two days ago. Saber hangs there, her head bowed. I'm relieved we made it, but on the other hand, I'm worried about why she's so quiet. I think Saber was in pain before. She was shivering and gasping, resisting Castor's magic with all her might. But she's dead silent now. I have a bad feeling. It's great Assassin's not here, but if this bad feeling comes true, we won't get out of here alive. Oh, damn. Masaka just coming in spitting fire. I guess she's trying to agitate Castor to throw her off. Tosaka insults Castor, hoping to break her composure. She slowly closes the distance between them as she talks, radiating confidence she probably doesn't feel. I shouldn't be concerned about Saber either. Tosaka's facing Castor by going counterclockwise, so I walk clockwise. Castor and Kuzuki. We're to separate them. We have to attack them from different sides and isolate our enemies. Tosaka's insults must have worked as Castor is glaring at her. I move while she does so. I move to the other side of Tosaka to a place where I can attack Castor from behind. Kuzuki watches me in silence. I thought so. There's no way that this man would not notice our trick. Kuzuki knows what's going on, that we're trying to isolate our enemies, and that Tosaka has a plan. Even with that in mind, he's letting Castor do as she wishes. It's not that Kuzuki's controlled by Castor, he's acting of his own free will. But still, his passivity is like that of a puppet. A servant skilled in magic as the backup, and a master skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Their roles are reversed, and I think their natures are reversed as well. Castor seeks the Holy Grail frantically, while the master protects her without question. That makes me think, what if Castor was the master, and Kuzuki was the servant who protected her? Maybe they wouldn't have fallen so low if that were the case. Tosaka glances at me. It means our positions are perfect. Then the match will be settled when either one of us attacks. It doesn't matter if we get defeated or if Tosaka beats Castor before that. 
Our fight will end right here. So let's start. あなたとの小競り合いもこれで3度目。いい加減ここで肩をつけてあげる。Tosaka takes a step towards Caster. 大きく出たわね。まさかとは思うけど、本気で私に勝てると思っているの? お嬢さん。だとしたら腕比べどころの話じゃないわ。今回も見逃してあげるから、まずその少年を直してらっしゃいな。そんなの勝てるに決まってるじゃない。だってそうでしょ。あなたみたいな三流魔術師に一流である私が負けるはずないんだもの。そう。なら仕方がないわ。その増長厳しくしつける必要があるよね、お嬢さん。Alright, here we go. They get ready at the same time, with a few meters between them, they act like mirror images. That's the signal. I attack the defenseless caster. And of course, I'm stopped by Kusuki. The ghost-like assassin is in front of me. I can't spare any attention for caster in Tosaka's fight. It's pretty sad that, like, the actual servant assassin is uh, basically put in the background and then we've got, like, a literal human who is acting more like an assassin than the actual assassin. Has Assassin actually been able to take anybody out in this, uh, in this route? He knows what I intend to do. He will not let me buy time. Letting out the snake that even cornered Saber, Kuzuki Suchiro comes to take my life. I can hold him off for a minute at most. It should be the same for Tosaka. But originally, with our opponents reversed, we had no chance of victory. Close range fighting or magic, we have no way to beat our opponents who surpass us in skill. But looking at it the other way, we can at least put up a fight. Tosaka would be killed in an instant if she fought Kuzuki. I'd be killed in an instant if I fought Caster. In contrast, we might not be able to win, but we won't be killed in an instant with this matchup. So in other words, this battle is not about how to beat one's opponent. Instead, it's a contest to see how long we can hold off an opponent of superior skill. All right, this is, yep, this is the truly, this is the fight episode. I'm here for it. The two weapons clash, twin swords and lance. The attacks are executed to take their wielders' necks. There's no hesitation in these attacks. Each strike is meant to kill. Even Lancer makes no exceptions. Even though he told Tosaka Rin, his ally, he'd go easy, that becomes secondary once the battle starts. It merely means if his lance happens to miss Archer's heart, and if it doesn't kill him instantly, he'll refrain from finishing Archer off on the spot. Even in that case, his enemy will die in due time, but Lancer just needs to drag him to Tosaka Rin before that happens. Lancer doesn't care what happens after that. <coughs> A red demonic lance invades the enemy territory. The lance breaks through Archer's defense each time it's thrust. It's not like that night. Archer can't block Lancer's attacks now as he could then. It's only natural. This is their second battle. Lancer was under the command spell's bind. To learn his enemy's strengths, his master told Lancer, Okay. Now the, the shackles are off. That's the only order he was given. He has followed such an unreasonable command, and this is his first battle without any binds. Therefore, it cannot be like the last battle. There's nothing binding Lancer, and Archer's now forced to fight the fastest heroic spirit. <clears throat> A strained voice escapes Archer's mouth. Even his hawk-like eyes can't follow Lancer's spear. But Lance's movement is a point to start with, and it's a flash of light now. He can't discern the lance coming at him. Even Lancer's movements are becoming invisible now. He's been able to block such attacks until now because he's had experienced them in a previous battle. He's doing what he can, using his inferiority as a weapon to block Lancer's furious onslaught. He's controlling where the attacks come. The Knight in Red limits the oncoming attacks by leaving fatal openings. Of course, he'll die if he doesn't dodge the attacks. But if he can choose between instant death and getting slowly cut up, he prefers to risk instant death. Otherwise, it will all have been for nothing. Fortunately, Lancer's still taking Archer lightly. Or rather, he's lost in the joy of battle. 
They're to keep on assaulting each other like this, he can think of another 30 ways to show an opening. Prediction using the information obtained. Planning using cultivated battle experience. Those are the nerves of steel, the mind's eye that one obtains through training. This is nothing extraordinary. This is the only skill he possesses. It's not innate like Saber's instinct, but it is a simple weapon that anyone can gain through hard work. See, doesn't that sound like Shiro as well? Lancer backs off and stops for a bit. He looks the Red Archer over as if dissatisfied. It's obvious who's going to win. Archer's no chance of victory in hand-to-hand -hand combat. That has been obvious from the start. Archer's an archer, like his name states. This cannot be a match unless he's shooting from a long range. But still, he blocked the attacks. He's inferior and should not last a few more blows, but he blocked, blocked Lancer's full force attacks. Is Archer strong, or is Lancer going easy on him? He laughs. Archer is a mysterious servant. He can admit Archer is strong in that regard. But it's unthinkable for Lancer to be going easy. The first attack was aimed at the neck to chop his head off. The second attack was aimed at the heart to destroy his body. He cannot be going easy. He shouldn't be, but... It is certainly true he wasn't trying to kill Archer. How does one know that this sort of fight is serious? A battle between servants is a battle between noble phantasms. The fact he's fighting Archer without using his is proof he's going easy on him. The reason behind it must be the thanks he heard earlier. <laughs> oh man, he's totally... he's totally simping for Rin, isn't he? Hopefully that's not going to get Lancer killed by, you know, just because Rin was nice to him. And it's going to be his downfall. <coughs> the weapons clash harder than before. The two spring apart in a shower of sparks. The full force attack by Lancer is nullified by the full force attack by Archer. They're about five meters apart. It's a distance Lancer can close in an instant. Gesen. The spearman in blue murmurs. Kisama. Right? This makes me think Archer has... he's got some sort of ulterior motive to doing that. Lancer stops, emitting murderous intent, but there's no opening in his stance. At that, Archer smiles a bit. Lancer, he speaks confidently with no sign of guilt. The knight in red shows no regret about betraying his master. So, Kayo. Tazaneta oring a baka that does it. Archer agrees. Lancer snorts and slowly raises the tip of his lance. Tashkani omaiwa ixajozada. So no omaiga tota shudan naraba. Fighting spirit roars up. Even faced with this, the archer in red still smiles. Ah, I need to do it. But, how in an instant, the slightly relaxed atmosphere changes. The air freezes. The magical energy to disturb the order of the world, the demonic lance that inverts cause and effect is raised. His murderous intent is incomparable to his previous ones. Though the tension must make it difficult even to breathe. The blue armored spearman growls in a voice that could drive the crows from a battlefield. Lancer jumps back a great distance. It's no longer a matter of thrusting his lance. There are over a hundred meters between them now. Lancer left back to the entrance of the clearing and crouches on all fours like a beast. Archer's senses freeze. Is it fear or awe? Either way, Archer understands right away. 
the meaning of Lancer's retreat. He knows his enemy's next attack is literally a fatal attack. Lancer with his limbs on the ground raises his waist. It's just like a sprinter waiting for the signal gun. Archer has no reply to spare. Knight in red throws away his swords and immerses himself in his own mind. But will he make it? Lancer's posture. His demonic lance is just like the legend. A noble phantasm to block it cannot be anything superficial. The blue panther runs. Even his after image is a blur. Lancer speeds to Archer like a whirlwind. There are a hundred meters between them. Lancer's not going to thrust his lance using that whole distance to gain speed. A blue figure crouches. After running 50 meters in an instant, the spearman suddenly leaps up from the ground. His body flies through the air. He holds the demonic lance said to always pierce the heart once it's thrust over his head. Space distorts. According to legend, that lance scatters numerous spearheads once it's released. In other words, Gate? The lance of causality joins with the words to form a tapestry of action. The spearman in blue arches his back as if drawing a bow. Mark and watch, somehow it's also not going to kill Archer, so that'll be twice that he's used uh, Gay Bulg and failed, because the last time he used it on Saber and didn't kill her. And he smashes down the attack with a roar. This noble phantasm is a throwing attack by nature, a lance that never misses the heart, a cursed noble phantasm that can't be avoided and will attack the enemy even if it misses. That is Gay Bulg, lance of destruction possessed by the hero that never lost in his lifetime. As it is hurled using all of Lancer's magical energy, it can be neither dodged nor blocked. Therefore, it is fatal. There's no way for anyone to survive once they're targeted by the demonic lance, except for when it totally fails which will probably happen again. The bullet approaches. In a split second, the knight in red closes his eyes as if accepting his death. I am the bone of my soul. The thorn of light blazes forth, and right before the thorn of destruction coming from the heaven strikes Archer. No. Ah, yes. Its true name shakes the very air as it is spoken. What if it ricocheted back at Lancer and killed him? It's killed with his own lance. The Lancer crashes into the shield. Oh, it's like a flower. The lance of death that penetrates every wall and outmaneuvers any evasion. That lance has been stopped. Of course it did. Poor Lancer. He just keeps failing. Radiating a storm of heat. The lance of sure kills stopped by Archer's noble phantasm. The seven flower- oh, it is like a flower. The seven flower petals appear from empty space and shield Archer from the demonic bullet. Who would know? The shield is Aias, the only shield said to have repelled the javelin of the great hero in the Trojan War. There are seven barriers shaped like flower petals, and each layer is as strong as a castle wall. It is a boundary field noble phantasm that is said to be invincible against projectile weapons. Throne Lance will be defeated by the shield without penetrating even one of the petals. At the very least, Archer doesn't know of a lance that could penetrate this shield. So he had the perfect noble phantasm specifically for Lancer. Oh, but the Lance of Sure Kill drills through the shields like it's nothing. Oh shit. <coughs> Six petals destroyed. Only one remains. The Demonic Lance reaches the seventh layer that has never been broken. The unstoppable thorn of the demonic lance in the face of that power. <laughs> With a roaring spirit, Archer puts all his magical energy into the noble phantasm. After landing, Lancer glances at the serpent in front of him. Archer's wounds all over his body. His raised arm is barely attached. Wow. His face is strained in pain, not only from the wounds on the arm, but also from the agony in his head. Wow, is Archer about to die here? The knight in red praises the spearman in blue from the bottom of his heart. But Lancer does not hear him. His strongest attack 
The attack that made him a hero has been blocked. He's so angry that his glare should be able to kill someone, but the anger is almost erased by his wonder. This is too strange. It is true Archer is a mysterious servant. His identity is unknown. He carries twin swords even though he's an archer, and now he shows a shield that can even block Lancer's strongest attack. It's absurd. There's no such hero on this planet. Kisama. I think we all know who he is. ただの旧兵だが君の見立ては間違いではないザレ事旧兵が宝具を防ぐほどの盾を持つものかバイニョットは持つだろうだがそれもこの様だ魔力の大部分を消費したというのにアイアスも完全に破壊されたまったく Lancer only glares at Archer, then... それより気づいたかランサーキャスターめ存外に苦戦していると見えるこちらに向けられていた監視が止まった。Archer raises both his hands as if in surrender. そうかよ。そうじゃねえかとは思ったけどな。てめえ。無論だ。言っただろう勝率の高い手段だけを取ると So he planned on this? He planned on Caster being defeated? I... I don't know what to think of him. What is his plan? ふん。とことん気に食わねえ野郎だな、てめえ But he wanted Caster taken out? Did he somehow, like, know all of this was gonna happen? Saying so, Lancer turns his back to Archer. His work is done. His role of keeping Archer busy is meaningless now. There's no more need for him to side with Tosaka Rin. The spearman in blue starts to walk away and lays down on the grass to wait and see. Oh my gosh. I knew he wasn't. He, he's, he's in too deep. He likes Rin too much. He's not going to just leave her behind. I think he's also just curious at this point. Like, how is this battle going to end? What is Archer's, like, what was his plan? <laughs> All right, status screen updated. I'm guessing it's probably going to be about Archer's... Um, Ba -ba -ba, his noble phantasm. Wait, what? It's not showing his noble phantasm. Strange. Of course, no details yet. Yeah, I mean, he showed his noble phantasm was the... Okay. Maybe it's going to be Lancer's noble phantasm. Except we already know about that one. I desperately parry the oncoming fists. Kuzuki's fists are live snakes. Even if I barely dodge them, they change their paths to come bite me. That's why Saber was seriously wounded. Saber was bitten by Kuzuki's snakes because she had the reflexes to dodge them. But I don't have such reflexes. I can't dodge them, and first of all, I can't even see his fists. I can't dodge them when I can't even see them. <coughs> My shoulder, Kuzuki's fist grazed my left collar. <coughs> it's just like a bush hammer. It feels as if my shoulders are being crushed and I almost drop my swords. <coughs> I bear it and parry the fist going for my temple using the sword in my right hand. <coughs> I desperately retreat. I pitifully retreat while Kuzuki closes in, not revealing any hints of how he advanced. <coughs> I shudder at his stance. I won't be able to withstand the next attack. It's miraculous I was able to parry the attacks until now. It doesn't feel real. I'd hoped I'd be able to protect myself and buy time for Tosok until she defeated Caster. But such hope disappeared after I took the first blow. Kuzuki Suichiro took our previous battle into account. I was able to fend him off as he attacked Tosaka back then. So I thought I'd be able to fend him off again if I had Archer's twin swords. But... In other words, it means I won't be able to do anything without them. Kuzuki knows that. What he did first in this battle was try to take the swords away from me. The sword in my right hand is destroyed. The fist, strengthened with Caster's magic, shatters my sword with a few blows. I immediately reproduce the short sword. I can't hope for high results with a forced projection, a quickly prepared sword. As a result, the twin swords start to lose their precision. I can't breathe right now. I frantically block Kuzuki's fist with, a sh with the short swords. 
I just followed the twin swords. In copying Archer, Emiyashiro's limbs have far exceeded the limits of his body. And then there's this headache. Something scraped away inside of me every time I project something. It's not the sensation of using up magical energy. It feels like my precious magic circuits are disappearing one by one every time I make a sword. I'm almost all out. I might be able to make two more. I'll die when my magical energy runs out. But first of all, can I stay alive until my magical energy runs out? <coughs> I'm flung away. Kuzuki's right fist, the fist he hadn't been using, was suddenly thrust like a lance. I shielded my chest with my blades. In that instant, my swords were destroyed and the impact flung me away. I feel something hard on my back. I must have been pushed back about five meters. <coughs> I try to draw a breath and realize that I can't. The penetrating impact has numbed my heart. I can't breathe and I can't move. It's only for a few seconds, in the few moments it takes my heart to resume its work. <coughs> the devil approaches. This is it. This man could kill me if I dropped my guard for only a second. With me like this, he has time to do it six times over. I glare at the enemy. Even if my limbs won't move, there's something I can do. First of all, I'm not suited for melee combat. Emiyashiro's weapon has always been his magic. Then it's not over yet. My role is to keep Kuzuki busy. I can't give up without fulfilling my role. <coughs> oh? The sound didn't come from right in front of me. The image of the sword disappears from my mind. Kuzuki, who is approaching to twist off my neck, stops. Something is happening behind him. It happened to Castor, the altar behind her. What? What? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Did, like, is, was that Saber? Tosak is also at a disadvantage. No, her burden is greater, as she fully understands the difference in their powers. I don't... Castor points her finger with a composed expression. The magic is Iro, Plague Wind. Castor does not need to cast her magic. For a witch that lived in the Age of Gods, incantations are unnecessary to connect herself with the world. Castor is always surrounded by divine mysteries of ancient lore. For Castor, magic is something she commands. It's just like ordering her guard dog to attack. She nullifies it with her treasured jewel. She does not have the time to cast a spell, and she cannot match Castor with simple magic from the Magic Crest. Their skills as magi are as far apart as heaven and earth. To bridge that gap, she must use the power she'd spent a long time gathering. Crystallization of magical energy that she has stored since she was born as a magus. For this battle, she's prepared to use all nine jewels remaining from the original ten. <laughs> Even though her magic is nullified by pure magical energy, Castor keeps her smile. Castor can continue using magic indefinitely, while the girl must oppose Castor using jewels as amplifiers. The difference between them is self-evident. No matter how many jewels she might have, it can't be more than ten or twenty. There's no way that Castor can be defeated with such a small arsenal. She nullifies the electric charge with the seventh jewel. He has six jewels left. With six more spells from Castor, her last resort will be exhausted. They're just buying time, right? I don't know, I don't know what the plan is here. She does not react to the giggling voice and takes out another jewel to get ready for the next attack. As Castor says, the jewel will not break if she uses it to protect only herself. The jewel should be able to protect her about three times, but she's using it to protect Shiro as well, I'm sure. But she can't do that. Castor's magic covers the whole temple once it is cast. Kuzuki should be protected by Castor, but he's an exception. If she cannot nullify Castor's spell before it's completed, Emi Ashiro, who is keeping Kuzuki Sichiro busy, will burn and die. <coughs> Therefore, it's meaningless to protect just herself. She cannot allow him to die like that. And besides, the whole plan revolves around Shiro keeping Kuzuki busy. Hmm. Right? I gotta think that she must have a plan. She's not just like they said that they're just buying time, right? Like what what are they buying time for? Does it have to do with Archer? Was this like a long con Archer planned with 
uh, Tosaka to do this from the beginning, uh, to, you know, pretend like he betrayed her so that he could get on Caster's good side. Except, I don't know, Tosaka, either she's the best actress in the world, but she seemed genuinely hurt by that. And how was Archer to know that, like, Lancer would come and offer his support? Caster moves her finger. She makes the first move this time. Her jewels will run out and she'll be killed if she keeps defending. Caster's magic and her jewels. The magical energy contained in them is the same, so it means that she could beat Caster if she makes the first move. But there's no way to exceed Caster's spellcasting. Tosaka Rin is the fastest because she can perform magic directly by releasing the jewels. Caster is also the fastest, as she is capable of creating divine mysteries with one word. There's no first move in their battle. This is merely a clash of power against power. First one to run out of magical energy will die. Then... She just needs to force her way through. She unleashes a barrage of jewels to penetrate Caster's magical energy. Jewels 5, 3, and 4 are released in succession. Moreover, she used the treasured fourth jewel to add a syner uh, synergistic effect. Its magic is beyond her limits. You can't use magic surpassing your own level. The one who said so is breaking the rule to execute this attack. The attack will destroy not only the temple, but the whole church if Caster doesn't defend against it. But the witch in purple blocks it like nothing. No, she didn't just nullify it. Caster has swallowed all of her magical energy inside of her robe. Tosaka stands there in astonishment. Behind her, she can hear the sound of his defeat. It sounds of breaking swords and his body slamming against the wall. The match is about to be settled. She has nothing she can do and her body sways. She staggers forward as if overwhelmed by despair. Ara, kore de owari? Mada temochi no hoseki wa aru no desho? She has no spirit to answer her. No matter how many jewels she may have, that was her greatest attack. If even that attack is useless, then she cannot hurt Caster, even if she has a hundred jewels. So, you'll <laughs> she stops herself from falling, holds in her nausea with her hand, and glares at Castor. Kuyashi?けれどこれが現実よ。むしろ誇りなさい。遊んであげたとはいえ、あなたはこの私に魔術戦をさせたのだから。Then, Castor points at her, as if to pronounce her death sentence. Castor slowly whispers her death. That opening. Oh, shit! She's been waiting for this. Oh, man! She she played her. She played her. Stuck. Crossed spy. Of course she had a plan. She only needs to say one phrase to release it. She hangs her head and smiles as she murmurs. This is when the badass music is going to kick in and the tables are going to turn on us. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I doubt my own eyes for a second. Tosaka and Caster. Their battle of magic has ended with Tosaka's defeat. Tosaka slowly staggered forward as if ca asking for Castor's forgiveness. And Castor released her magic to finish her off. I'm guessing like Rin had to just get close enough to her to be able to, for whatever the spell is going to be. At that instant, Tosaka nullified the magic. That's fine. That's not surprising. The surprise came after that. Tosaka charged in and attacked Castor. Tosaka throws herself into Hellfire. Nullifying the magic and using it as a cover, she attacks Castor. <gasps> Castor's surprise is that of a Magus. She could not have predicted a Magus defeated in magic would attack with bare hands. Oh, she... 
So that's it. So that's it. She's basically just going in physical because uh, Caster is mega. She can't, like, physically defend herself. I didn't expect it either, so it must be, like, hearsay for Caster, who's an excellent magus. And it's not just some desperate move. Tosaka closes in and hits Caster in the chest with a move from Chinese martial arts. <laughs> nice. <laughs> A shattering sound. Tosaka's fist must be strengthened like Kuzuki's as her attack easily penetrates Caster's defense. It's good to be well rounded. I'm fascinated by her combination. Uh, also, you're still fighting Kuzuki. Maybe try not to focus too much on this fight. Tosaka drops after the first attack. Putting her hands on the floor, she sinks below Caster's knees. To Caster, who lacks any experience in hand-to-hand -hand combat, it must look like Tosaka disappeared. She executes a strong sweep. Damn, she's badass. She lashes out her foot with all her might as if to cut off Caster's legs. Her feet swept from beneath her. Caster lands on her back. But it doesn't end. After the sweep, Tosaka gets up with her back turned to Caster, using the turning momentum to attack with her elbow, and so maybe Kuzuki will be temporarily, like, uh, distracted by this because he's like, oh shoot, do I need, should I protect Caster? And then maybe I can come in and finish him off. Tobe! Stopping her turning, Tosaka punches with all her weight. Oh! Caster's body is knocked away. Taking the punch directly, Caster smashed into the wall like me. <laughs> With her back to the wall, Caster moans dizzily. <laughs> They're separated. Tosaka kicks the ground to cover the few meters in between them. The match is settled. Caster cannot move and her wound seems fatal. It seems fatal. But, I, I don't know, it could turn around again. It usually takes a couple of attempts before a victor is declared. The battle only lasted a moment. The match is decided within five seconds after I was smashed into the wall by Kusuki. Oh, alright, maybe it's done. But now we have to worry about Kusuki. Caster doesn't have the energy to fight back. Tosaka runs to Caster with saber-like speed and executes her finishing blow. Strengthening of a few seconds using magic. Tosaka intended to fight Caster like this from the start, so hopefully with Caster down, then, you know, she can take on Kuzuki since she's got magic, and then uh, Shiro can provide backup. Caster only saw Magus and Tosaka. She challenged Caster at magic so that she could achieve her one-time surprise attack. And the plan worked. Caster has been deceived and has lost completely. Tosaka has won the battle. But have we won the war? Yes. Yeah, so go nope. mother, Tosaka. <laughs> Of course. I knew it! I knew it wasn't going to be that simple. If not for this man's monstrous ability. I love how they're like, he's like, Shiro's like, yes! And Kuzuki's like, no! <laughs> if Tosaka ran to cast her like a hurricane, he ran like the devil's wind. So... Tosaka stops. Kuzuki Suichiro, the one who was in front of me until now, is standing in front of Caster. Uh... Ah oh, shit, Tosaka lost her opening. I feel like that was the only chance she had for like a surprise attack and now it's been stopped. Tosaka moves. The instant Tosaka feels death, jumps back and shields herself. Kuzuki's attack that blew me away strikes her in the face. Oh no. She guarded her face with both her arms and jumped back, but she's still sent flying. Tosaka smashes into the wall opposite me, her arms dangling as if broken. He speaks plainly, but that's not Tosaka's fault. The reason she lost her chance is because of me. If I'd kept Kusuki busy, Tosaka would have beaten Caster. This is my fault. My weak fighting skills were unable to stand up to Kusuki's ability, and our once-in-a-lifetime opportunity was lost. <sighs> I wonder if uh, Castor will be able to, like, re uh, not revive, she's not dead, but at least, like, be able to heal herself. Castor regains consciousness. Protected by Kuzuki, Castor looks around the temple. This is it. Surprise attack won't work on Castor anymore. Osaka's tired, and I can only project two more swords. If, if Castor uses her in this situation, we will never make it out of here alive. 
感謝しますわマスターあなたがいなければあのまま倒されていました世辞はいい今はセーバーを起こせ甘く見ていい相手ではなさそうだええ的確な判断ですわマスターキャスターポイントの女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の女の子の It's Castor that notices the strange event first. Kuzuki doesn't notice. Was he actually playing 4D chess the whole time? Like he went in pretending to、uh, work with Castor only to betray her? What? It's because Kuzuki cannot detect magical energy. Castor moves above her master, above Kuzuki Suritro's head. Yeah! Are floating numerous swords. So i t o I mean, maybe. Maybe Archer's just doing this so that she can't really saber.、Um, because once saber's like under Caster's control, it's all over. But I'm so good because Archer made it sound like he, you know, he wanted to take whatever the best side is. And it seems like Caster would still be the best person to go with. She must have figured out her injuries will prevent her from blocking them with magic. Caster uses her body to protect her master. t o r e s Ah, t r a z o n Yep. I mean, it's been pretty obvious that Archer is a version of Shiro, but that pretty much cements it, huh? The murmuring voice from above says those words. The sound end. The sounds end. The swords appearing in midair come down at one target and pierce one body. The numerous blades rip and tear the meat, then disappear like an illusion. What's left are traces of blood. Okay, this is it, right? We're done now, but like, what's Archer's. What, what was his motivation for this to betray Castor? I'm assuming he wanted to do this from the start. <laughs> Maybe he just wanted to put them in a position where they were distracted and, and、uh, vulnerable and finish them off. It having become his shield of her own free will, she now turns her bloody body to the man behind her. So、Archer just had us do all the dirty work and then he just comes and finishes them off. Kuzuki is silent. In front of him is the skewered servant. Maybe there's no need to hide it now. The robe is removed from her head and the woman walks over to her master with a bare face. <laughs> Why is it when her, her thing is removed, she looks like 20 years younger? Her body's collapsing. With a dying body, the woman looks up at her master, who has not twitched a brow. Her slender fingers run across the expressionless face. <laughs> This is kind、Magic、of sad.、Scar. Like, she's. Must. She seems to be vying for his affection so much, and he's just given her nothing. Her voice seems clear. There's no change in Kuzuki. He only answers with a simple yes and does not even look at her. You got t h a a n a t a ni s h i n a r e t e wa k o m a r i m a s He looks as if it is fine. And it's. She seems like she's been kind of on her own, like just betrayed by everybody. So she's just looking out for herself. So it's、uh, kind of sweet that she was willing to protect herself. And, you know, not just because she's a s e r v e n t To protect him and not just because, like, she's a servant. The woman smiles, knowing what kind of man he is. Aww. She wanted him. Yep. The fingers running along his cheek fall down. Beginning at her toes, Castor's body is disappearing. Okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe there's something going on between them, but it's just like, that's just the type of person he is very emotionless. She smiles at the simple answer. She smiles as if seeing a short lived dream. Yeah, her wish was to be with him, probably to be human to be with him. Oh, I'm so sorry I keep cutting her off during this, like, sad moment. The witch collapses as if going to sleep. Purple robe falls. The robe without its wearer fades and disappears as if following her. Kuzuki does not even look at her. His attention is focused on the man above. The knight in red who should be above me. 
I get a headache. It's not just because I've abused projection. A muttered spell. The spell, he said, is smashing my brain with nausea, right? That's why he's been having the headache every time he's been around Archer. It's like he doesn't want to believe who he is. Trace on. That's what he said. He said the exact words of the spell that shouldn't be used by anyone else but me. Archer comes down the stairs and stands in the temple. Tosaka's watching him with surprise. Archer? Is she saying, is it true that you're like Shiro? Or is it true that like he never intended, like he was, he, the betrayal was a farce. Like <laughs> Archer does not answer. I'm assuming it's probably more about like, wait, like you're actually a version of Shiro. He's only watching his enemy, Kusuki. Alright, time for Archer to lay out what his intentions are here. Archer shows no guilt, even though he's betrayed Castor in front of us. So, Kuzuki does not change his tone, even in front of a betrayer. He still has the will to fight. He's not a magus and he's lost Castor, but he has the will to continue fighting. He readies himself. As Castor is gone, Kuzuki's strength must have dropped substantially. His snake is still there, but Castor's strengthening that made his fist into steel is gone. But still, Kuzuki faces Archer like before. So, Archer readies his twin swords. Their duel has begun. I don't imagine this is going to last very long. Is that all right? Kusuki said he has no interest in the Holy Grail. A master in name only, he merely went along with Castor. Then there's no reason for him to fight now that Castor's gone. I glare at them, gritting my teeth against the pain. Kuzuki narrows his eyes a bit. そうだ。戦う理由などない。お前と同じく私は聖杯などに興味はなかったからな。なら。だが、これは私が始めたことだ。それを途中でやめることなど。<笑> <なら。笑> That's it. That's all the reason he has. The battle starts. The battle should end in one blow. Even if Kuzuki has superhuman fighting abilities, he's fighting a servant. He can't be a match just by being superhuman. Even though this is called a battle, it's actually just disposal of the loser. The fate of the loser. It's the battle between masters to kill and to be killed, and that this is the end they have to be ready for. One shouldn't fight at all if he can't accept that. But still... Oh, oh, wasn't expecting a choice here. Ah! Uh, I'll have to check and see. <laughs> I should always have it up just in case, but I never have my phone with me. So I'll have to check and see if there is... Except they said that there was no more bad ends in this route. They said that they think there was like maybe a secret bad end. Okay, so as, as expected, uh, this doesn't actually lead to a bad end, but the recommended one was what is wrong with stopping them if I can, and I should have realized that that's of course what he was would try to do. If I can save him, is it wrong to want to prevent his death if I can? Because he's all about saving people, right? I don't care if I'm called soft-hearted. I know it's just hypocrisy. To defeat another master means killing them. We fought, prepared to kill each other. I know how unfair it is to stop them now. Still, I decided to fight so I could save people. I can't ignore a life that can be saved. I suppress my headache and try to stop them. At that instant, Kuzuki moves. Kuzuki must have taken my voice as a signal as he rushes Archer in a flash and lashes out at his temple. Any ordinary man would have his skull crushed, but Archer does not dodge it. His head moves from the impact. The knight in red takes Kuzuki's blow and pierces Kuzuki Suichiro's chest at the same time.
There's only silence. Nobody says anything, and I have nothing to say in any case. But on the positive note, that means Saber should be okay, right? Because Caster's gone, so she's not going to be under her control anymore. Kuzuki Sarichiro died. He was silent until the very end, and he died on the path he chose without showing regrets or hope. I have a headache. Is my magic circuit compressing my nerves? Or can I not forgive Archer for killing Kuzuki? Or am I pissed at myself for not having the right to say anything to him? I can't tell. My headache only gets worse. I turn around at the sound. With Castor's disappearance. Yay, the bonds must have broken. Yay, we've got our servant back. Saber is on the floor in front of the altar. Except, I don't have my... I don't think I have my command spells anymore, right? So, but knowing Saber, she'd be the type to be like, I don't care if, you know, you don't have your command spells. I am bound to you as your servant, and I will remain that way. I don't know if that's how it works. If you can, she can just choose to still be a servant, even if I'm not technically a master anymore. Saber painfully breathes on the floor. That makes me forget about my headache. Saber! I run to her. Even this short distance is an annoyance. Shiro. She raises her head. Saber sighs in relief as she sees me run to her and... <gasps> oh shit. Is Archer gonna like try and kill me? Because of course he is, right? <laughs> she tackles me with her shoulders and pushes me away. Damn, poor Saber. She just doesn't get a chance to relax. She's been in tortured for two days. Immediately, she's just... In protective mode. She pushes me forcefully to the side. My body flies for a few meters and lands on the ground. Wouldn't that suck if Caster, or not Caster, if Saber just got killed right here by Archer, like after finally being able to be in control again? <laughs> I land on my back. <sighs> I shake my confused head and look up. At that instant. Of course! God damn it, Archer didn't even wait for a second. He's just like, all right, time to kill Shiro. I hear steel hitting steel. <laughs> Saber is there, fully armored, and numerous swords lie on the floor right where I was standing before Saber tackled me. <laughs> he says in a bored voice facing Saber. Saber, who can barely keep her body standing, glares at Archer. Well, I don't think Tilsaka's gonna want Archer back anyway, because you can't really... Well, first of all, her, uh, she had her um, contract broken, so he's not technically her servant anyway. And, unlike Saber, I don't think Archer's gonna come back to Tosaka. So, uh, yeah, I think she's lost Archer, no longer her servant. Oh, it's... I don't even need to ask why she's glaring at him. He shot those swords from behind to kill me. Saber saw that and instantly pushed me away. Tosaka watches him in astonishment, and Saber readies her sword while breathing heavily. Poor girl has like barely had a chance to recover. Their situations are different, but they both have wonder in their eyes. Why is Archer trying to kill Emi Ashiro when Castor's dead already? The only calm ones are Archer and I. It's because they know, right? And Shiro must know. It's not that surprising. We hated each other from the start. We opposed each other, unable to get along. It's because you guys are two sides of the same coin. Archer seems to just be like Shiro once he's been beaten down. And, like, something happened, obviously, to Archer, right? There was, like, the flashbacks. Um... And I think Rin even mentioned it herself, right? About, like, all the suffering he had to do, so it's probably like a twisted version of Shiro. I don't know why, but I just can't approve of him. The reason behind it, if that is really the reason for us not being able to approve of each other, it's natural for him to want to kill me, right? <laughs> Maybe it's a thing where it's like only one person should be existing in the world at the same time. I get up. Saber must have been desperate. She tackled me without holding back, so I can't breathe properly. That just makes me more determined. This is all she could manage when she tackled me with all her might. She doesn't have enough power left in her to even fight me. It's suicidal for her to confront Archer in such a state. Tosaka draws near Archer. It's natural. Archer switched his caster side to attack her by surprise. Now that it succeeded, there's no reason for him to attack me. 
芝居はもう終わりでしょキャスターは倒したんだからもう勝手な真似は許さないわよ。So wait, was Tosaka in on this? Or she. Huh. About like the whole thing about Archer switching sides. I don't think so. You're a son. Right? Yeah. The contract was broken. Huh? 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 After staring up at the night in astonishment, Tosaka gasps in sudden realization. Whoa, whoa, he's not gonna kill her. What? Tosaka jumps back. She gets away from Archer, tries to run towards me, who's still on my knees, and. Oh my gosh, her movement is stopped cold. A swarm of swords about two meters high. They pierce the ground, drawing a circle and become a circular prison. Okay, so he didn't want to kill her, he just wants to keep her from getting in the way. <laughs> It's a circle big enough for one person to fit in, and Tosaka's trapped inside. <laughs> お前にかけられた霊児の縛りも存在しないキャスターについた理由はそれだけだあの霊児を向こうにするためにはあの霊児を向こうにするためには契約を破棄せねばならなかったからなおおキャスターについた理由はそれだけだあの霊児を向こう
lightsaber can't even take those swords right now. I get up and reach for Saber. Did she do it to get away from my reach? Saber pulls herself together, kicks the ground, and charges at Archer. Yeah, we are truly getting a lot of fights in this episode. The battle ends after a few blows. Saber, the one who was uh, who overwhelmed Archer before, falls to her knees, unable to stand for even a few seconds. Okay, I'm gonna guess either I'm gonna come in and help out, or maybe Lancer? Maybe he can get up from sitting on the grass outside and come help us out? The sword isn't even in Saber's hands now. After resisting Caster's command spell for so long, she has no magical energy left. Unable even to breathe, she puts her hands on the floor, desperately trying to hold her disappearing body together. Oh shit, we're gonna lose Saber? Archer raises his swords. The twin swords are swung down onto Saber, and... <laughs> of course I stepped in, of course I did. I jump in from the side and stop them using all my might. <laughs> I ready my twin swords. I hold the instantly projected weapons and glare at the, uh, the knights in red. Oh. <laughs> I confront him. We both have twin swords in our hands. Our physiques are different, but our stances are the same in every regard. A sneering voice. My limit is near, as he says. My headache does not stop, and my magic circuit has its limiter full from all the projection magic. My brain will explode before I get slashed if I fight him while retaining the image of the twin swords. <laughs> to Archer charges in. <laughs> to that, I frantically move my swords as if slashing my headache away. I swing my arms. My techniques are all a copy of my enemies. My weapon is copied, and my technique is copied. Therefore, I cannot match him. I couldn't match him even if I were in top condition. An imitation can get close to the original, but never surpass it. I could not match this man from the start. The man told me to drown in my ideals and die. The man said my life is a false life. Could not object to those words because he was my ideal. A power to make the impossible possible. An existence that saved many people and became a heroic spirit. It was I who wanted to become such a person. That's why I can't match him. The man in front of me is the end of that road. He's my ideal, becoming strong to save people, so... <laughs> my swords shatter. I was able to block his attacks, but my twin swords disappear. I can't stay conscious. My body isn't hurt, but my insides are bleeding and about to give out. <laughs> He raises his sword. As I try to figure out with my dazed mind if the sword will come down from the right or the left. Yes! Every time someone's about to die, someone comes in, and whenever they play this music, I'm like, oh shit. Hosaka's gallant voice echoes through the temple. <coughs> Wait, is she is she able to get him back? That must have caught his attention. The sword slows down a bit. If that's the case. <laughs> I can dodge it even with a body like this. I roll on the floor and get away. <laughs> Archer clenches his teeth, but looks at Saber instead of pursuing me. <laughs> oh shit, Tosaka! Is she taking Saber as her servant? 
Tosaka reaches out towards Saber from within the Prison of Swords. I guess Tosaka does still have command spells. Like, I'm all out, but she has some, so I guess she could still form a contract. Saber runs to her using her last power, and I Saber no did not see this coming. Okay, so now Saber is Tosaka's servant, but she's still fighting for me. Rin. A contract that should have originally been made. And, and, because Tosaka's got all that magical energy, Saber's gonna be even more OP. Saber finally obtains a master that is appropriate for her. Hell yeah, hell yeah, fuck yes. She's like, you haven't even seen me at my true power. Like, she's going Super Saiyan, this is amazing. Violent wind rages. She must have gotten back her true powers by obtaining a true master. Saber's unlike anything she was before. Maybe this way she might even be able to stand up to Gilgamesh. I'm not the only one that gasped. Even Archer's fascinated. Rising swirls of magical energy and armor that can never be damaged. There seems to be no end to, the, to this overwhelming power. This is Saber, the heroic spirit of the sword, said to be the strongest servant. Oh, okay, you were going to let her make a contract, okay. So that was his plan all along, was he was going to kill, uh, you know, have his thing of like, killing Shiro, his, his mission is accomplished, and then he was going, I guess in a way that's nice, I guess, that he was thinking about Tosaka and he still wanted her to continue on the Holy War, uh, the Holy Grail War, even if it's not with him. So I guess like Archer fulfilled his his goal of killing Shiro, and then he was going to let Rin have Saber. It's like, okay, dude. <laughs> but now that this is the case, I'm like, I don't think, I think Archer's fucked now. Archer murmurs while looking at Saber. He must not have enough to spare to pay attention to me now. Dude, do you not realize who Saber is? Unlike you, she actually has like honor like she's like no i told you before it doesn't matter i'm gonna protect shiro that's right hell yeah saber is firm that means that you're not gonna touch him <laughs> you you've got no chance now archer clucks his tongue and grips his twin swords again He's basically like, you should have killed me before, bitch. <laughs> You're not going to be able to now. Saber's warning is true. Saber would not lose even to Berserker now. No matter who he may be, Archer can't match Saber. He should know that more than anyone, but... <laughs> Meanwhile, this dude, Archer, oh, that's right, Archer doesn't have a master at all, so he's going to run out of magical energy eventually, and he's going to disappear. Archer charges. Their weapons clash. Archer charges in at Saber like a red bullet and attacks her with all his might. Ha! Saber receives the blow like nothing. Neither the size difference nor Archer's momentum matter. Saber repels Archer's swords without flinching. Archer, the one who attacked, is the one who retreats. The attack made with all his strength, a blow that should not need to be repeated, is... <clears throat> not only is it blocked, but his body loses balance as well. <clears throat> is he gonna die right here? Archer steps back. There. Saber swords attack him like surging waves of raging fire. Archer can only defend against her attacks. Saber's sword will kill him if he tries to counter. No, first of all, he doesn't have anything to spare for a counter-attack. The only resistance Archer's allowed is to block Saber's attacks until he runs out of energy. And that should not take long. The magical energy in Saber's sword scrapes away Kansho and Bakia with each attack. The twin swords cannot take anymore, and Archer's arms should be powerless by now. The match is settled rather quickly. Archer falls to one knee, unable to stand against Saber's assault. Saber swings down her sword as if to finish him off. Archer blocks it by crossing his twin swords in front of him. The battle is at an end. Even though he blocked Saber's blow, Archer cannot move. Saber's sword will split his head in two if he loosens his power on the twin swords. 
<coughs> is he about yeah are we about to lose archer right now damn archer puts power into his arms to stop saber's blow sweat forms on his forehead and he's breathing hard in contrast saber's breathing is normal it's impossible for archer to beat her in hand-to-hand -hand combat it might have been different if you were in perfect condition, but you cannot fight on your own with your depleted strength. Exactly. Yeah, he's on borrowed time アーチャーのサーバントにはマスターがおらずとも単独で存在する能力がある。マスターを失ったとしても、2 アーチャー。あなたの望みは間違っている。なぜ。なぜそのような結末を望むのですか。そんなことをしても、あなたは。will not be saved. Saber bites her lips and stops herself from saying so. <laughs> 間違えているか? The muscles on Archer's arms bulge. He looks at Saber once. それはこちらのセリフだ、セイバー。君こそ。he says so with eyes staring far away. Saber's sword loosens. <laughs> Using that opening, Archer gets up and kicks Saber with his freed leg. <laughs> Even though she's knocked back, Saber lands gracefully. The situation hasn't changed at all. Saber is protecting me and facing Archer, who has Tosaka trapped within a cage of swords behind him. The distance between them is five meters again. <laughs> the twin swords disappear and he confronts Saber unarmed. Archer, Archer. With those words, I'm the bone of my soul. He begins the spell in a voice I can't hear. やめろ、アーチャー。私はあなたとは。セイバー。いつかお前を解き放つ者が現れる。それは今回ではないようだが、おそらくは次もお前と関わるのは。Unknown to death, unknown to life. The spell echoes through the temple. There's no change. A long spell like that should affect the surroundings. Magic influences the world, but his spell does not affect the world, but instead. He raises his left arm. Does that complete his spell? Unlimited blade works. He clearly speaks out and changes the world. Fire runs. It runs across the floor and looks like a white line. Is the surrounding fire a boundary line? The color of fire fills my vision and paints the temple. After that, my surroundings are replaced by this strange world. Okay, so yeah, this was what we saw in the, like, in the visions. Pain fills my brain. I can tell. I understand what this magic is, what this absurdity is. I shouldn't be able to understand, but I can tell what this is, whether I want to or not. And that makes my brain boil. In short, this is a steel manufacturing factory. 
burning fire and turning cogwheels. A field of swords without owners extends to the, uh, to the horizon of the desert. All the swords in the ground are famous. Kansho and Bakia originally came from this world. An almost infinite projection of weapons. Innumerable weapons make this place seem like a waste yard. The night in red reigns at the center of this kingdom of rubble. The confused voice is Saber's. Inside the illusionary fire that is not even hot, she watches the night in blank amazement. Oh yeah, morality or the reality marble. Uh, didn't who used that? Um, that was used in Fate Zero. I think that might have been Archer, or at least Gilgamesh in that one used the reality marbler. Yeah, I think he used it against Ryder, if I'm not mistaken. Tosaka sounds disinterested. Could it be? Did she already know Archer's true identity? そんなものはない。私は聖剣も魔剣も持ってなどいなかったからな。俺が用いるのはこの世界だけだ。宝具が英霊のシンボルだというのなら、この魔術こそが俺の宝具。武器であるのならば、オリジナルを見るだけで複
There is no way I can't reproduce the Reign of Swords in front of me. Broken pieces fly around. When I open my eyes, this reality marble has disappeared. The only things there are the broken pieces of swords and... <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> A hellish nausea as if my organs have come up to my throat. After glaring at me in disgust... <clears throat> He takes out Tosaka from the Cage of Swords and restrains her. Oh, uh-oh. Is so he gonna be like, hey, Saber, you gotta make a choice. You gonna protect your master or your fake master? Tosaka struggles to get away from Archer. <gasps> what did he do? Archer places his hand on Tosaka's neck and renders her unconscious. And he leaves the temple. Oh, okay. With Tosaka in his arms, Archer jumps to the stairs leading up. <laughs> She's not even concerned, like, her actual master is being kidnapped, and she's just like, meh. This is the I bear my nausea. I strain my fainting mind and listen to what he has to say. <laughs> and I say so with a shaking throat, not even able to look up. My vision flickers. Even as I speak, I feel sick, as if in another dimension. <laughs> I don't want to hear meaningless things. If I do hear them, I won't be able to hold this nausea in and I might vomit out my organs. I make this oath. I violently scratch my forehead, tearing off the skin in an attempt to silence my headache. Yokaro, Basho stays to me, Kaida. Ichinichua ans and Hosho stare. Danga is so you, Master Gainaima, or it to the Jiganganai. Konomi of Scato Motanadaro. Sono my new my o Korosanito Araba. Haraiseni. Leaving an annoying laugh, Archer disappears. I slump to the floor, unable to keep my eyes on him. An arm comes and supports me as I start to fall. She does not seem concerned at all. I suppress my headache and manage to get up. シロ。それはいいのです。リンは無事だ。アーチャーもリンには手を出さないでしょう。それより今はあなたの方が危ない。リンのことは私に任せて、シロは家で休息を取るべきです。いや、そんな暇は。I try to finish, but I start to faint. Damn. I can't even complain, huh? I don't even get to object. Saber supports me and starts to walk to the stairs. Nope, status screen updates. That is probably going to be that 
Saber is now... Yeah, Rin's master. The sky is still gray. We leave the now empty church. Oh, oh yeah, hey, bud. I love he actually waited for us. Then, I see a familiar spearman in front of me. Saber glares at him while supporting me. He's so tense she might slash him if he takes another step. Saber stares at Lancer in astonishment. It seems he's enjoying Saber's reaction. Did Lancer also, did he see Archer go off with Tosaka? Um, what does he think about that? Especially because he hates Archer so much. I bet Lancer's gonna tag along and just be like, I need to I need to make sure that my precious Rin is okay, and then be mad at Shira, like, how could you let him take her? Huh? Nanda? <laughs> I knew he was that kind of guy, but he's thorough as he's making fun of Saber as well. <laughs><笑>何がおかしいのです、シロ。え、今笑ってたか、俺。ええ、笑っていました。どうやら私の思い違いだったようですね。Saber is mad. It's bad, but I'm relieved. Saber's just like before. Our connection is lost, but she's here just like before. Then, what's there to regret? Lansa. <laughs> With this, Saber goes down into the clearing. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he's like, wait, 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 what's this about rescuing Rin? Tosaka Suppressing my dizziness, I meet his gaze and answer him. Nani? Oi, mate. Sora do you kotoda? I'm sorry, but I don't have any energy left. I'm not able to explain such a long story. I should go home and. Acha no mokteki wa shiro o koros koto des. Sono tame ni watashi no master to natta rin o sarai. Kokan jo ken to ste, shiro ni ikki uchi o meiji mashita. Ichi nichi jiu ni acha no moto ni ikana kereba. Well, it helps me out if you can do the explaining, but it does nothing to explain the situation to Lancer. Then, he takes off his friendly face and grits his teeth. Yeah, he's coming along. <laughs> Lancer. I don't know if it's because maybe Kyrie wants Lancer to, like, make sure that Rin is okay for whatever reason, like, to look after her, or if he has, like, some just crush on Rin or like affection for her but he's like for someone that he's just met like he's only met Rin a couple of times he's very invested in this he's, yeah he's very against the betrayal thing yeah he's gonna come with us yeah. Having said this, Lancer starts walking. Saber watches Lancer silently. I understand how she feels. He's saying that he'll come with us. It's called uh, Tosaka's feminine charms, I guess. <laughs> Saber sounds more shocked than amazed, even though, uh, was it Archer said that she basically, she has no charm. Unfortunately, I don't have the energy to reply as my wounds are starting to hurt again. No, first of all, I'm the one who wants to ask that question.
and I recall his dream, the memory of the guy that was set up as a hero, the story of a knight whose end came at a place I can't reach. This hill is his world. This desolate land is what the man who kept on fighting for others obtained. I guess he smiled and died in satisfaction in this place. That's right, it just makes me mad. He tried his best, worked hard, even though he's an ordinary person, and finally obtained a miracle with his blood. Then it will be a lie unless he becomes happy, and this is why she was so invested in having Shiro be happy, because it's like, she knew what was, what was waiting for him in the future. He made many people happy, he should become happier than all those people combined. But he did not receive such a reward. What he obtained in its place was the fate to be summoned as a guardian after his death. That's right. Why didn't I realize that simple fact? The guardians are summoned into every age. Doesn't that conversely mean that they're summoned from every age? From the present and the past. Heroic spirits can even be summoned from the future. Since guardians are pushed into a seat away from the time axis, the concept of time does not exist for them. As soon as one becomes a heroic spirit, they sublimate into something other than what they used to be when they were human. Then, it's possible for a guardian to be summoned into the place and age they lived in when they were alive. It's vexing when I think about it. It's because neither of them is saved. The one that watches his previous self. The one that watches his eventual self. They'll both be hurt by the gulf between them. I know the end of this big idiot who tried to be of help to others. He became a guardian by choice. He thought it would be great if he could keep saving people even after he died. He could not save people when he was alive because he was powerless, but he believed he could avert every tragedy as a heroic spirit. Thinking so, he made a contract with the world, gave his body after his death, and saved a hundred or so people. He believed that he would be able to save more, tens of thousands of people after his death. But such hope was betrayed. Heroic spirits are summoned only into hell. They appear only when the world is about to be destroyed by people. Humans are beings that will perish from their own doings, for the process of destruction must always be the same. He was summoned only into these hells. In the land of death, where the ones he wanted to save were already dead, he killed even more humans. The boy who stated he just doesn't want to see anyone cry, could only see crying humans forever. It's like a monkey's paw situation. There's only one thing I can say. He's been betrayed by many things, and in the end he was betrayed by the only thing he believed in, his ideal. I am the bone of my sword. Steel is my body, and fire is my blood. I have created over a thousand blades, unknown to death, nor known to life. Have withstood pain to create many weapons. Yet those hands will never hold anything. So, as I pray, unlimited blade works. That is the only spell given to him. What is that? I'm so mad that I want to hit him and scold him. I, Tosaka Rin, I've never had any hardships in my life, so I might not have the right to say it, but I believe in working hard and going through pain. It's wrong not to be compensated for your fights. That's why I'm angry at his uncompensated life, and most of all, I can't leave him be because he ended up cursing his life. You're my servant, so I'm only going to do what I believe is right. I'm not as loose as Emiyashiro, but I do have some things I cannot give up. I won't give it up no matter who's telling me so. That's right. That's why I decided that as long as I'm his master, I'll believe in my path like he used to do. That's about all I can show to him. That's the only way I can repay him. It might have been meaningless, but still. I do it so that Archer, the one who lost his own past, can realize his life was something he can be proud of. Well, that was an intense episode. Had a lot of awesome fights, a lot of ups and downs. Caster and Kusuki are no more... And Saber is back, but not in the way I was expecting, actually being uh, Tosaka's servant, but I guess it makes sense with Shiro having given up his uh, his command spells. And we got the confirmation of, I mean, it's been, it's been pretty much in flashing lights for a while, but yes, um, we do know who Archer actually is and why he hates Shiro so much. Quite the 4D chess move to agree to work with Caster just so Caster could break his contract with Rin so that he wouldn't be bound by the command spell just so he could kill Shiro. 
Um, so we are gearing up towards like the final showdown, it seems, except maybe not because we still have Gilgamesh to worry about. But at least the final battle between Archer and, uh, and Shiro seems to be coming to a head here, especially with um, Archer on borrowed time. He doesn't have much time in the world. So they're going to have their big fight in the castle. And then we got to take care of Gilgamesh and figure out how to defeat him. It's good to have Saber back, at least. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. It seems like we're, we're getting hype. I'm hoping the next episode uh, is going to be that battle. It's not all going to be like a lot of lead up to it. And we're just going to be able to like to get into it. I'm super excited for it. Hopefully you guys are too. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned next week to see uh, if we're going to see that battle between the two of them. Until next time, guys. Bye. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons. Emily Hornsby, Salieri, Zorn Ether, Amdere, Revealing Storm, Icognito, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gazip, Jared Fan, and Saturn Sins.